to the Hedgehog Hollow back with the Academy of Scrapbooking and Art and today I wanted to show you how a die cut can really pack a punch on a really simple stamped background. So I'm going to be using the Ulta New Wild Ferns stamps and they are a set of layering stamps and the new Ulta New stamps also come with these fab inserts. So these are the Ulta New um, envelopes. I'm going to gently prize out this background piece. And the reason I invested in their envelopes is because I can keep these pieces in there. So their new stamps come with these inserts. So they give you a layering guide. And then you also have some card fronts that if you're looking for a really quick and simple card, you could either stamp on top of these or add some extra details in. And then you also have some inspiration. Plus it tells you if you wanted to create these cards yourselves, it tells you how to do that with the stamps in your pack. So I've been keeping these and I really, really love them. We'll make sure we link up to these special envelopes as well. And then you can just fold them up. I did also buy the matching dies for these because although I normally scan and cut um, most of my stamps out, these were one of them that I thought I may actually want to be able to die cut out. So I'm gonna peel off that release piece on the back. And one other thing you're gonna notice about these stamps, I'm gonna put the envelope behind it for a second, is you have your A1, A2, A3. So these three stamps go together. And then you have a B1, a B2, and a B3. And then you have a C1, a C2, and C3. So there's three lots of ferns and your, two, your three letters go together. So you've got your A, your B, and your C. And then you have a couple of sentiments in there as well. So that's how they're going to work together. I have my cube trays. Now this is how I store my ink cubes. Um, I don't have a huge amount of the Ulta new ones. There's also my lawn form cubes in here. And these fit two side by side in the wider Alex drawers, which is how I store all of my inks. And this is the best system I have found for storing ink cubes. So I'm gonna start off by peeling off my A1 and my B1 and my C1. I'm gonna use some of my newer colors. I got the new greens and we're gonna start off with Firefly and Greenfield. And I'm gonna use an acrylic block to make it a little bit quicker. And we're just gonna alternate between a couple of them. So I pre-cut my card base and it's a piece of the Tonic Ultra Smooth cardstock. I've cut it down to three and three quarters by five inches. So I'm just gonna stamp down these are going to layer so if I don't get a perfect image I'm not going to worry too much because I am going to stamp over the top so I'm going to grab an extra acrylic block this one's a little bit too small but that will fit on there and so this is the great thing about building my own background so these are brand new ink cubes it take me a second well I'm going to keep the lid relatively close to the right color as well just so that I try to at least get the right one in the right place. And so you can see you can just stamp down really quick and easy. And I'm gonna get Greg to pass me an extra acrylic block out the side of my cabinet because he's on the right side of my desk. That's fine, thank you. Now that he gets to film all these videos live, he also has started to notice some of my tools. I'll be doing something, he's like, oh, that's a misty, or, Oh, that's an acrylic block. So maybe it's extra husband points for knowing. He's doing the dance behind the camera. So, so I'm not really thinking too much because this is only gonna be a background. And I'm gonna alternate between some of these different stamps. And this is only layer one. And we have three layers with each of our stamps. Okay. So that's our layer one with our wild ferns. So really, really easy. And I'm gonna do the same, as so I'm gonna take all of our B1s, all of our ones even, I'm gonna pop those back on our sheet. And I'm gonna take off our twos and pop those on our acrylic blocks. And I'm going to endeavour not to get my sleeves in the green ink, but hey, I'm at least trying. These are water-based inks, so if you do get them on your clothes, 
you can usually wash them out. Now I'm going to put away my Firefly because that is my lightest shade. So if I use the Firefly, I'm going to use my Grass Field as my shade number two. And if I use my Grass Field, I'm going to use my Shadow Creek as my shade number two. And the Ultra New inks, if you buy them in the cubes, you can buy them in packs. So um, they come in these lovely sets ready for you to use with these wonderful layering sets. And the great thing is, if you use the photopolymers, you can see straight through. So I'm going to line this up. And so you can see on this leaf here, where I've now put my layer number two on, I've started to add some depth. And in a minute, I'm going to add stamp number three. And that's going to add even more depth on. Now on this one, I want to add a little bit darker still. down. Is that one done? This one I used. So I'm going for the lightest ones first because then I don't have to clean my stamp and I am a lazy stamper. And so we actually want our darker shade. And if you're going darker you can go straight over the top. You don't have to worry about cleaning it. And we're going back in with this one. And if by accident you go in with the same shade, you can always stump over the top darker again. No one's ever going to know the difference because trust me, I've done it. And you just end up with slightly different shading and every leaf is a different color in nature. So if you do it a slightly different color on your card, again, no one's going to know the difference. So I'm just layering these up and you can see how quickly this is coming together and you can also see all those beautiful different green colours that we're adding in. And just keep turning your piece, you don't have to keep it pointing straight and it also doesn't have to have perfect layering either. So again I'm going to take those number twos off and I'm going to put them back and I'm going to peel off my number three and then I'm going to peel off my two. Put down my three and the same on the last one. Now you could of course use a stump positioner if you wanted to as well and I'm going to put my grass field away and I'm going to end up with my shadow creek and my mountain pine. So let's start off doing our Shadow Creek one. And you'll notice the stamps get smaller and smaller the darker you get. So this stamp is a lot, lot smaller. We're only adding some really dark kind of highlights. And then we're going to go in this one which is here, so that's our Shadow Creek. Again, perfect placement is not necessary. And we want it down here too. And you'll notice when I'm done with them, I'm moving them out the way because A, I'll put my arm in it. And B, I want to make sure that I remember that I finished with that one. And so this one goes over here. And this one goes over here. So you can see there all of that texture all those beautiful shading and we haven't got one marker out, we haven't done anything at all. Really, really easy. And what you can do, so for instance in this one here I have been through all of those different shades, but what I can do is I can go back to this one here. I didn't use the Mountain Pine because we'd been through all three shades, but I can take my darkest, um, my fourth colour which we didn't use, 
I can just touch in some of those areas. I didn't touch the whole stamp in. And this is the darkest color that we didn't use. And I can add even more highlights. You can almost create a fourth stamp for yourself as well. So you can almost add details that aren't there if you want to add even more texture. So they're my kind of top tips and hacks for using layered stamps. So you can really create things that aren't necessarily there. You can create that fourth stamp if you want to add even more texture. And lot, all the Ultra New Cubes come in sets of fours. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give my work surface a quick wipe because I did over stamp off the edges and I don't want my card base to have any green or I don't want it to be green. So this is just a spray of water and some kitchen towel and that's how easy it is to clear up because their inks are dye based and that's why I like working on a glass mat or an easy clean surface. I'm going to pop that in the bin behind me. Now I've already prepped my layers as well and I can tell you the sizes I cut those to and I've made my die cuts and we have our sentiments. So everything is ready to go. So I have a pre-scored, pre-cut card base, Nina Solar White. So I'm gonna fold that in half. So this is A2 size. And then this is a piece of that satin black tonic cardstock, which has already been cut down to four and a quarter, uh, four inches rather, by five and a quarter. I'm using my funky tape runner here. And whenever I mat my cardstock, I mat it open because if you notice when it's folded like this, it still has a bit of bounce. Even when I've taken my trusty Teflon bone folder, and that's why I like this one because it has that curve to smooth it down. It still has a little bit of a gap in here. Whereas if I mat it flat like this, it's flat and it's not bouncing around at all. And this is why I love it. So you can see how fab is that? So now I have a really nice even mat on my cards. Now we're gonna add our beautiful die cut and I'm using this beautiful from the My Favorite Things Bold Beautiful die set. And I pre-cut this out with some glossy black cardstock from Tonic. And I'm gonna be using my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and this is how I like to apply it. So I take a piece of kitchen towel I go through a lot of kitchen towel in this room. But what I like to do is I squeeze some out onto my glass mat. And this one is nearing its end. I've used so much of it making things for creativation. I'm eking that last out. But I take a dauber like this and I dab it on and I just pick up my adhesive. So rather than having to work with those really small dots, this is so easy. I'm applying a really thin coat that's not gonna squelch out the edges or anything like that. And it does dry clear. And the great thing, of course, is I'm gonna have no clear up and no mess on the other side. So I can see I've got a reasonably good coat and really no waste either. And this is a door but I only use for my adhesive. So I keep that there all the time. And then I pop my beautiful on the top and I use a card backer or something else and I just pop that over the top and I give it a nice press down. And the reason I use something larger is you're not gonna move or distort your die cut. Whereas if I did it with my fingers, it moves my die cut around. Now sometimes like this, I might want to do that. But in general, you're not going to. And you may find you've missed a bit. Like I can see under this U, I've missed a little bit. So I'm gonna grab a bit more of my deluxe adhesive. And I'm gonna squeeze out because I really am eking every last little bit out of my deluxe adhesive. And I'm gonna lift it up. But I can just touch under my U. And so anywhere that I feel I didn't get any, I can touch under. And I have made some really lacy frilly boxes that there is no way I would have been able to use 
double-sided adhesive, it would have got really t mangled and things through die cutting machines um, for creativation and I've made them all through this method and fingers crossed they're going to make it all to creativation and back in one piece. Um, they've made it numerous trips to photography studios and all sorts of things already but you can see there how easily that has stuck on and it really is the most beautiful die cut there's a little bit under this u too i think it's a stunning die cut too so you can see there and i don't have any kind of glue marks squelching anything like that at all and you can see that lovely gloss on that beautiful too now the b does cut out all the details so i could stick in the b and things but i really want to just leave it with that kind of abstract look to it and I'm going to use the beautiful Hello Beautiful die set to add a sentiment onto our card. So to do that, I'm going to use a white piece of cardstock, which I'm going to get Greg to grab for me, which is just over there. In case he's a very he's a great glamorous assistant to the side. And now we've moved the craft room around because we don't film top down anymore. We film so that you can see things closer up. And let's pick out a pretty sentiment. So for my beautiful friend, we're going to pick out, we're gonna pop it. So if you want to ever get a perfectly straight sentiment with photopolymer, pop it on any surface and then pick it up. Whether it's with your misty, whether it's with an acrylic block, you'll find that they um, level themselves out perfectly um, on their own. If you try to pop them on, you'll always get a little bit of a wiggle in there. And I've stamped it out using the My Favourite Things Extreme Black. And I'm going to just trim it out using my favourite scissors. I'm going to do a rough cut first. And then I'm going to do a closer up cut. So I'm just going to trim fairly close because we've got a lot of things in there. This is just a little sentiment. And I use a long bladed scissor because it means I'm going to get a much straighter cut. It's not so reliant on my hands. And I'm going to cut fairly tight too. So there's our sentiment. And we'll grab some foam tape. And now I'm going to stick everything together. So we're going to stick on our beautiful ferns again funky tape runner around the edge and you can get refills for the funky tape so you're going to center that up again matting straight where it's flat and we're going to pop this just on the edge there I already have a slimmer piece that I have from a previous project perfect ready to go I'm going to use my favourite long nose tweezers on here. We're going to pop our sentiment in the middle there. So really quick and easy. Love the bold green colours and that wonderful centre. And you can see the gloss as the light's catching that sentiment on there. Thank you so much for joining me here at the Academy of Scrapbook Arts. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you've been enjoying our creativation coverage as well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notification of all our other videos. We still have more coming from creativation as well. We filmed so much while we're there. Our feet still hurt as well, so we're still recovering. Don't forget to join us again very soon. Hit that like button and give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. Links to everything I've used are in that video description for you as well. I'll see you again very soon. Happy stamping everyone. Bye.